Hi everyone, my name is Veronica. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about fragrances that remind us of scents of the summer, smells of the summertime. It is late June here in Virginia. I grew up in New York City, so a lot of my memories related to summertime scents are from uh, my days in New York as a youth. This is what's called a tag video, which means that a, a creator here in the YouTube fragrance community came up with the concept. This one is the concept of Chantel Tiffany, who I will link below. And then that person names other people that they would like to see do the video. And then those people name others and so forth. And that's how these tag videos go around the YouTube community in case you were ever wondering, what is a tag video? And where does that come from? Um, I was tagged by Lala at Lala Da Beauty. Thank you, Lala. If you haven't checked out her channel, please do so. I will link her down below. She's beautiful, super fun, really sweet, one of the nicest people in the community, and is always, always supporting other people, leaving great comments, shouting other people out, which I completely appreciate. Let's jump into the scents. So as I mentioned, I grew up in New York City in the Bronx to be exact. And if you've been to New York, you know that it is quite the concrete jungle. When I think about summer, one of the scents that comes to mind, one of the smells that comes to mind for me is one that may not be popular in this tag video series. And it's actually the smell of hot concrete and asphalt. I know, I know that's a weird thing to think about, but in the summer when it's super hot in New York, there are smells that come up from the ground, from the city streets. And to some, they may be a little bit stinky, <laughs> but if you live there, there's something quite nostalgic about that scent. And then when I grew up in the Bronx in the 80s, there were all these projects attempting to like restore some of what are called abandoned lots of land and so forth and turn them into uh, gardens. And they could be vegetable gardens, they could be flower gardens and so forth. I did happen to live near one of the city parks. So in addition to the smell of street, I remember the smell of parks. And you know what wet earth smells like in the summertime or hot earth, even if it's not wet, dirt has a specific like smell, mineral, um, like a dirt smell, it's hard to describe. So the fragrance that I have for the combination of street smell and that dirt smell is called Ursa from Tiziana Terenzi, Ursa. This is one that I did purchase for my husband uh, and I like to use it also, although this is one that is good for only cold weather, at least for me as a female. This is a very woody fragrance. It's heavy on the patchouli. It has a little bit of spice, a lot of leather, some tobacco, and some oud in it. And there's something about this that reminds me of concrete, hot concrete smell mixed with that dirt smell, the green smell, but mostly dirt from the park that I live near. This has some dried fruit in it, some rum, a little nutmeg, a lot of oud and leather. This is a gorgeous fragrance, not for the faint of heart. Some people consider this fragrance to be a dupe or similar to Killian's Straight to Heaven. And I think there are some similarities. Straight to Heaven is a little bit easier to tolerate on the skin. This is kind of a rugged, brutal fragrance, not one that I would suggest for people who want a soft fragrance. This is rugged, but I like it. Let's move on to memory number two, which is one of my favorite, favorite things about summer is the way the atmosphere smells before it rains, like right before it rains. When I was a little girl, I would watch out of the window for thunderstorms forming and was always fascinated, be it daytime or like early evening with the way that the clouds sort of billowed up in the air. Maybe billow is not the right word, but formed uh, into these big, thick, juicy clouds. And once the thunder started and the lightning, the lightning was fascinating to me, watching it sort of spider through the sky was just amazing to me. A fragrance that I associate with that is actually from the Demeter Fragrance Library. Thunderstorm. 
it is exactly what it says it is what like a replica of what the air smells like right before a big juicy thunderstorm it has an aquatic thing it has a mineral aspect to it it feels clean i don't know how to describe it but you know what i'm saying thunderstorm that's number two number three is that smell of just like sweaty human skin from the summertime so we played outside a lot as young kids in the actual like city streets no not in front of cars i'm talking about like on the sidewalks actually sometimes the area would get closed off for what we called block parties so no traffic could come in and out of an area but the kids could play families you know barbecued or whatever in the actual street but what I'm getting at is that those hot summer humid days, we played a lot, we got sweaty and a little bit, you know, musty, just like slightly musty. Let's think about us getting musky instead of musty. And the smell that comes to mind is amber saffron from Clean. It's that smell of skin, like sweaty skin mixed with the hot detergent like if the detergent that's in your clothes your freshly laundered clothes that you have on if that heats up in the summertime mixed with your sweaty skin that's kind of what this reminds me of it's a really nice skin set kind of fragrance but it reminds me a lot of what wafted off or wafted off of skin of kids you know they're not like they don't have like the hormone thing going on yet, so they don't smell like adults when they get sweaty. It's a different kind of sweaty when kids sweat. But yeah, amber saffron from Clean. I like that a lot. Memory number four is from the Bronx Zoo. Being in the Bronx, we were really proud to have the Bronx Zoo near us, which is one of the greatest zoos in all of the world. Really huge park-like property in the middle of this concrete jungle. So it was quite the escape to go there. And of course you got that dirt smell from it being park-like, a little bit of green, and the animalic smells, of course, from the animal exhibits and the things that they do, you know, all of their functions, if you will, <laughs> uh, mixing in the air. And all of that also mixed with what was something that was really popular in terms of fragrance in the 80s, and that is body oils. So there were a lot of people that really wore a lot of heavy oils. And sometimes the oil smelled like incense. Sometimes they smelled like white linen from Estee Lauder, that smell. Uh, and sometimes they smelled ambery. You can get all types of oils. And so mixing like the green and the dirt from the Bronx Zoo, plus the oils that people wore, plus that animalic scent reminds me of Lancôme's Magie Noir. Magie Noir. This is both woody and green. It's earthy, it's aromatic, it's got notes in here all over the place. This is like a kitchen sink fragrance, as I call it, which has a lot of notes, uh, and it includes galbanum, raspberry even, bergamot, there's cedar and orris root, tuberose, jasmine, oak moss, spices, civet, patchouli, amber, myrrh, sandalwood, musk, and a bunch more. That's just some of the notes that are in here. But it all mixes together to remind me of these nostalgic trips to the Bronx Zoo, which I loved as a little girl. It was so nice to go to the park. It's like an oasis in the middle of the Bronx. So that is memory number four, Bronx Zoo, Magie Noir. Memory number five, growing up in the 80s, a lot of people smoked. A lot of people still smoke now, but it was a lot more sort of common back there and acceptable back then rather, and acceptable for people to smoke, smoke in public, smoke in closed spaces, smoke everywhere. I think people even still smoked in airplanes at that time, if I'm not mistaken. And people wore really heavy perfumes as well. So one of the fragrances that reminds me of that, it's Hot Couture from Givenchy. And I have the Eau de Parfum concentration this is a great surprise for me. I heard a lot of people hyping this up here on YouTube and decided to try it out. And I'm really glad that I did. It's beautiful. It's fruity. It's sweet. There's a little bit of spiciness in there. It opens up with citrus and raspberry. It has some magnolia and vetiver in the middle. And in the base, sandalwood, amber, and musk. 
and is just a delightful combination of like a fruity but faintly um, cigarette smoke slash ashtray kind of smell. Sounds weird, but it works and it's beautiful. Get your nose on this. Hot Couture Eau de Parfum Givenchy. Memory number six is of going to pools. We went on vacation a lot. We went to Disney World, we went other places, and my mom always gave us a day or two to just play in the pool as kids. It gave everybody a chance to just calm, calm their bodies down from all the walking at the parks and that sort of thing. And I love the smell of going down to the pool, the chlorine off of the pool, the sunblock off of everyone's skin, and just like this freshness in the air from the chemicals. So the fragrance that <laughs> reminds me of that is Bulgari's Aqua Divina. Aqua Divina. I love this, um, this bottle. It looks, it reminds me of like a, an oyster or clamshell. Pretty cool. I hate that it doesn't lay down. I mean, uh, sit up straight. You have to lay it down. So that's a bit of a pain. But this is considered a salty, floral, citrus fragrance. There's something so just clean about it. It's a floral aquatic. It has salt at the top, ginger, bergamot. It has magnolia. It has some woody notes in the base. There's something about this fragrance that reminds me of the air around a pool. So these next fragrances are taste related. One of my favorite memories is of the soft serve ice cream truck coming and asking my dad for a quarter to get a soft serve vanilla ice cream cone, which was my favorite. And the fragrance that comes to mind, it's not exactly uh, ice cream flavor, but it's the one that I thought of is Laura Mercier from the Eau, Gourm or Eau Gourmand fragrance, Ombre Vanille. How lovely is this fragrance, especially on the opening? It's a sweet almond powdery fragrance, but it has some vanilla and coconut in here too, which is probably what's reminding me of uh, soft serve vanilla ice cream. There's orchid, there's heliotrope in here, a little bit of sandalwood in the base, but I think it's the coconut and the almond in the middle mixed together that makes me think of vanilla ice cream cones. Eau Gourmand Ombre Vanille. The next food association, this isn't exactly a food, it's water, flavored water. They're called Firaguas. If you grew up in a city or if you grew up in the island, you may know what I'm talking about. Well, the equivalent in any other beach setting is called shaved ice. It's the same concept. So typically it was a gentleman, you know, with an island background for the most part that would push this cart around the streets and he had a huge block of ice that he kept under a wet towel. Who knows what I'm talking about? Drop me a note in the comments. And he had all these flavored syrups, like a million flavored syrups surrounding this huge block of ice. And he had this scraper thing. And you'd go up to him with your little quarter and you'd say, Mr. So-and-so, can you get me um, a uh, piragua with whatever flavor? And I loved the cherry flavors the most out of that. And so that reminds me of Tom Ford's Lost Cherry, which is one of my all time favorite fragrances. I know people complain about the longevity on this and I know people complain about the cost and they should, this is outrageously priced, but it's one of those fragrances that to me is so beautiful that it's worth paying extra. Not the full retail, maybe half of that. <laughs> Maybe half of that it is this delicious cherry fragrance, a syrupy cherry fragrance that is just amazing to me. It says it's a sour cherry, but it's a sweet cherry to me. It has a liquor note at the top. It has some rose in there, tonka bean in the base. There's a lot in the base, cinnamon, sandalwood, cedar cloves, a lot going on. But this is just a juicy fragrance that reminds me of that cherry piragua that I would eat and then my whole mouth would be all red from having the syrup. Love this so much. Along the same lines, there was also something called the coquito. Same kind of thing, gentlemen pushing. It's always a gentleman for the most part. I never saw any women doing this, at least not me growing up. And they had a little cart and they usually had these two like um, cylinders, like tubs in there, right? And they had coconut, like a coconut flavored type of icy it's like an icy right an icy and they would put it in this little white cup 
and you would literally just kind of like lick it and suck it up and then you know <laughs> drink up all the juices at the end it was so delicious loved it loved it loved it it was also a quarter for a coquito that was about this big and the scent that reminds me of that is one that i just love this doesn't last long you guys if you get this get yourself a little decant also a little decant bottle put some in there and take it around it's so worth it though for the price harajuku lovers electric pop g this is a coconut vanilla fragrance with a tropical twist to it it's like it's just like a pina colada fresh out of the machine so awesome it reminds me so much of the little coquito uh, ices that we had as a kid wonderful 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 and it has a whipped cream note at the top that is so fun this is about you guys like 12 dollars or something online love it that's where the fragrance comes out of in case you're wondering <laughs> okay moving along the next food fragrance that i associate with the summertime is of course the sort of quintessential summer fruit, which is watermelon. Now, I don't have a true watermelon fragrance. Has anyone tried New West by Aramis? I'm not talking about the male version, I'm talking about the female version. That had a very realistic watermelon scent to it. I can't get my hands on an original formulation that's any less than many hundreds of dollars because it's so rare now, it's, it's discontinued. The fragrance that I have for watermelon is, everyone knows this, right? No surprises. La Imperatrice Tree. tree. <laughs> That's what happens when you're really trying hard on the accent. La Imperatrice 3 or 3. Well, how do you say 3 in Italian? Anyway, from Dolce e Gabbana. This is the most realistic watermelon fragrance that I've come across since New West. It's a zonic and aquatic, but also floral and fruity. And it has watermelon and strawberry at the top, which is really nice. A beautiful peony note in here. And a little bit of smoke in the base, which gives it some substance. Lane Petitrice 3 reminds me of watermelon, juicy watermelon that you can only get ripe and fresh in the summertime. I have two more. Thanks for sticking with me so far. And I can't for the life of me remember the name of one of the candies I'm going to talk about, but it's two that remind me of the same kind of tart, fruity taste. And one is Now and Laters. By the way, there are all these candies from the 80s that just either, either aren't made anymore or they're harder to come across. I lived above um, two stores. One was a little bodega, which is like a little uh, grocery store slash delicatessen, and then a candy store that had penny candies, nickel candies dime candies quarter candies and whatever and we will go down there with like a dollar and change and just rack up on a bunch of, bunch of little candies give me five of that give me ten of that there are these candies that are still made you suck on them right they, you don't chew them you kind of just suck them down and they are in like a, a rectangular kind of form help me and they're tart fruity candies they're clear really hard almost look like cast resin but what reminds me of that is from the house of loeve which is a house out of spain and this is quizás seducción it's like maybe seduction i think is what that translates into directly this is a white floral what it has that reminds me of those candies is this sweet fruity thing going on this when it opens this very tart blackberry passion fruit fragrance that reminds me of now and laters and other hard fruity candies from the 80s in the summer the final fragrance that i want to share with you in the memory association is along the same lines we would get a lot of gum i associate summertime with gum i also associate summertime with sunflower seeds we ate like at least three billion sunflower seeds in our youth in the summer. And I'm talking about like we ate the whole thing with the shell and everything. I don't know how our little bodies digested that. Maybe we can chat about that another time. But I can't figure out a fragrance that smells like sunflower seeds, but I can figure out a fragrance that reminds me of gum. Gum, bubble gum, bubble yum, bubble gum sweet powdery gums of all kinds and while this isn't exactly a bubblegum smell and i know there are other more close bubblegum smells out there one from my collection is good girl gone bad by killian 
there's something about this, the powderiness of this, the sweetness of it that reminds me so much of bubble gum and bubble gum kinds of candies. There's a tuberose note in here and maybe that's what it is. Uh, tuberose can sometimes be very uh, bubble gum-esque. There's also osmanthus in here, which is maybe the two of those combining to give me that bubble gum smell. Good Girl Gone Bad by Killian. Those are my 10 memory associations that came to mind when I thought of this tag. Let me go ahead and tag a few people. I love to spread around the tag love and hear from different creators how they interpret the questions of the tags. So I'm gonna tag Annie at Annie Reviews, C or Cecilia at C Chronicles, Richard Keycott at that name, Yulia Graham at Scent Siblings, dot c dot a and marcy at marcelena teresa hope you all enjoyed please subscribe please like and i'll see you on the next video take care friends